Hello, I am Suzanne Spooner, and this is an official QHHT session segment. Hello, everyone. This is Suzanne Spooner, and I'd love to give you a little information about this clip that you're about to listen to. An energy anchor is what I'm calling this clip. This woman is amazing. She's allowing us to use her session and her first name is Heidi. Thank you, Heidi, for letting us use your name with this clip as well. She came to me just recently. Uh, the session was done not very long ago. However, I met her about a year ago. We were both at a workshop together and didn't know each other at that time but met at the workshop. She decided that she wanted to have a session, got her booked. She was about a year out in time. We didn't stay in contact between the two of us other than just normal emails about the session back and forth. She actually lives in the city that I live in. So uh, we're not far away from each other, but our paths just really hadn't crossed until that workshop. So she comes to her session, uh, explains that um, her very interesting life has led her down the path of fundamentalist religion, um, came, moved out of that in, in a formal way, and more into the world of spirituality. Um, some parts of that really resonated with her, other parts did not. The very interesting thing about Heidi is that she's aware of her inner guidance and she hears it and is usually a very good listener when they're giving her direction of what she should be doing or what needs to be changed. She's very good with this. Um, so the session was sounding pretty interesting before we even got started. As the session began, she is on an island and her job is taking care of this black pyramid. She described it, I believe, uh, like black onyx or shungite, very smooth pyramid on an island. Uh, it was in the time of Lemuria, and there's so much energy coming from that uh, pyramid that sh that pyramid couldn't be in Lemuria. It had to be off on an island, but she was the caretaker of that, which is a beautiful explanation of transferring of energy between something like a pyramid and a human body. So what we find out there is that she's an anchor of the energy, that's her job. Uh, her, her highest self said that she anchors, discerns, and has unique connection to other realms. This is a role that she fulfills throughout all of her lifetimes. So we explore that island in the pyramid. Interestingly, you'll hear how the energy of the pyramid came into her physical body. And then she transports to places where she's needed. Um, the place that she heads to next is Jerusalem. And there she finds a young Jesus, um, just a toddler at that time. And you'll hear the interaction and, and the exchange that happens there. She actually stays in a knowing contact with Jesus throughout his physical life on earth. And she's helping to supply him with energy. Again, a beautiful experience to hear. When we cross over, you'll hear her um, explain in great detail what she calls the great leaving of places like Machu Picchu, the cultures that left in mass, and how that happened. Very interesting perspective there. And then we're going to go through the rest of her session, beautiful healing of the body, very interesting information about her DNA and her 28 strands of DNA. Um, and we also learn about this interesting gift that she has through art. Um, this gift hadn't started in full when we met about a year ago at that workshop. Uh, since then, she has really explored her artwork, her painting, and was aware that she was putting codes into the painting and energy, that there were portals. Didn't quite understand it, but was really open and receptive to it. And so in the session, we learn more about this amazing work that she's doing, not just in the 3D earth world, but multidimensionally how her art is affecting other dimensions. It's really, um, it's a fantastical journey. It is a mind expander. 
Uh, and she is just a joy. You'll, you'll hear it in her voice. She just, the information just flows from her. It was so much fun to give this session for Heidi. And again, we both hope that, uh, that you take away some information from this session to help you even expand and, and know that you are so much more than perhaps you've believed or been told so much to each of us on the planet right now. And this session segment is just a beautiful example of how much we are. So thank you to Heidi, and we hope that you enjoy this Energy Anchors session. At my feet, there's um, uh, it's like a dusty rock, um, coarse pebbles, almost like gravel, but more brown tans even some oranges. I sense behind me that there is a big body of water, almost like a ocean, but it's very calm. It's almost glass-like, um, um, still. Um, it's not frozen, it's just very calm and smooth. Do you notice the colors of it? It's it's um very it's almost white, but it's of of the water. It's almost white, but there's very uh, intense aquas and and things in it when you look at it. So it's a very bright uh, bright blues, um, almost flu fluorescent looking blues. Wow. Um, and again, smooth. It's kind of throwing me. It's just so smooth and calm. And you said that's behind you? That's behind me. I'm, I'm standing on... Um, I'm, I'm sensing that it's an island of some sort in the middle of this, uh, this, this water. And before me, I'm seeing... I'm touching a black stone um, pyramid. It's a huge pyramid. Oh, tell me about the black stone pyramid. It's um, very similar. It's shiny. It's a shiny black stone. And it's smooth, almost like if you would rub your hand um, on the side of, like, polished office granite or something, you know, on the outside. <laughs> yeah. um, it looks maybe similar to shanghai or um obsidian or you know a grounding stone and how is it is that pyramid bigger than you or yes something? it's much bigger than i am yes um and you said you're touching it i'm touching it do you get a sense of why you're touching it i'm a caretaker of of its energies and how do you do that work? With assistance, with guidance. It involves, um, since I'm I'm alone at this place, other than the other entities and frequencies and dimensions that are assisting me. Almost like a lighthouse, you know, uh, like a lighthouse caretaker. Right. But it's of a pyramid, like I'm the caretaker of this space to help those on a journey find, it's like a, it's like a beacon, it's like a a beacon of light um, that helps guide people on their journey. And uh, like I said, I'm alone on this space with this, but I don't feel alone. I feel very, very much taken care of. All my needs are provided for me. You said that it feels like there's entities, yeah. frequencies, dimensions with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Can you describe that? 
a little bit? I don't often see them. I feel them. Uh, very present to me. Like I, I sense them. I sense their, their loving touch and empowerment toward me. And they guide me on what to do with the pyramid, um, to, for its ultimate purposes. Um, do you get a sense of what the ultimate purposes are? Sometimes. I, I feel that one reason I was led to this, why I'm the caretaker, is that I don't have to understand it all to be able to appreciate and to do my work. Okay. That I'm comfortable in the mystery, and yet I am also uh, very tuned in very, very tuned in with um, the entities that are helping, the frequencies, the beings. They're not in a physical form. Um, I, I sense them, okay. and they communicate with me of what I need to do. Um, in regards to a purpose, I, I'm, I'm hearing that it, it's um, very important. It's... It's a big portion of a grid connecting other parts of the grid. Okay. Um, uh, I see light. I see a huge beam of light like coming out of the top of it. Okay. Um, going up into the sky. And I sense that it goes f far beyond my comprehension and things are drawn to it and brought to it. And it's a, uh, it's an anchor. It's an anchor point on the grid. Anchor point. That's so wonderful. Oh, you're doing so good. Okay. So let's do this. Let's bring your focus to yourself there before mm -hmm. we go much farther. Um, when you look down, do you see your feet? I'm barefoot. And as you move up the body, what do you wear on the body? Very little. Um, since I'm alone, I'm kind of a free spirit. <laughs> um, uh, I sense that maybe I have a type of loose, maybe, wrapping that sometimes I may choose to put on. Sometimes not. Sometimes not. Um, Do you notice any jewelry, ornamentation, marking on the body? I have rings. I'm seeing rings. Uh, I'm looking at down at my right hand. Um, Tell me about the rings. Uh, they've been given to me from... Huh. I'll, I'll find them on the island. Oh, just... Like, thank you gifts. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's, they're thank you gifts. And they're all different, different metals and different uh, stones, uh, different alloys. And they're, they're given to me not only as gifts, like, way to go. You're doing good <laughs> with the pyramid. But also they serve purposes. They serve, um, like when I put them on, it helps with the energy amplification, not only in my body, but it connects with the pyramid and the pyramid then connects with the grid mm -hmm. and then to the dimensions. So they have purposes too. Um, I have a lot of them. Do you? Yeah, like. Do you ever wear them all at once? Yeah, I am. I'm looking at them. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> it kind of feels, uh, it, they like, it's interesting because some of them only fit on certain fingers. So that tells me which, where they're to be. It's okay. like they're created for that pers specific finger. Nice. Um, and it's just rings. It's not any other type of I see bracelets as well. Okay. What are the bracelets like? Um, same type of thing. I'm seeing a lot of gold, what seems, 
I'm hearing it's not gold. Uh, golden um, bands around my arms, um, both sides, jewelry on both sides. And what significance do they have? Same types of things, gifts from these frequencies and dimensions. Uh, uh, and like the little jewels in them or the little stones all have, they're significant to those places they've come from, okay. like a sacred stone or sacred. From another frequency yeah, or dimension? Yeah, like a sacred piece of them. It's almost like it's uh, coated with knowledge, like oh. uh, 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 they're embedded. There's so it looks like a stone. It is a stone, but uh, I'm I'm almost thinking of like a Lumerian crystal, very similar, like with codes. Uh, I'm familiar with Lumeria, Lumerian crystal, and there's these codes, and I feel like there's these codes in this jewelry that are activated and provide me with assistance and knowledge. Um, so yeah, I might be naked, but I have <laughs> jewelry on. Okay. Sounds pretty nice. Um, so do you carry anything in your hand? Sometimes it depends. Um, I, I, I see myself walking around the pyramid. I'm guided to walk around it in certain ways. Uh, like certain amount of certain circles so many times I have to walk around it. Right. And then there's times I'm guided, like as I'm walking, like I'll hear, place your hand out now and touch this part of the pyramid. And then I'll touch that and then something will happen. And then I might feel it. You know, I'm just very, I just hear spirit like, okay, put your hand, your left hand on the pyramid as you walk around. I'm seeing myself walk around counterclockwise at this point and put your hand here and I'll put my hand and and then I'm guided to maybe direct my other hand down like pointing toward the earth like off to the side to direct the energies down into the earth as well do you feel the energies as I do that? I feel tinkling mm -hmm. uh, um, I fit a, I feel a bit like a lightning rod okay um, but I know I'm protected so uh, I can handle a, a, I can handle a great deal of energy flowing through me, and that's one reason I was picked to anchor this spot by myself, and why only frequencies and the non-physical have to assist me here. So it's like they needed a physical body, but they needed someone that that could handle the energies and also just trust it, just have fun with it and, and also discern. Um, I was also picked, I was chosen because I can discern very well of that which is not of highest good. Oh, nice. Do you know how that skill came to you? I asked for it. Nice. Does your physical body there feel more male or female? I feel male, darker skinned, um, yeah, like uh, um, younger, but not young. Um, like a young man? Yeah, maybe in my 20s, 26-ish. Body feel healthy or not? I, I feel very provided for. But if somebody would look at me, I would not appear healthy. Oh, explain that, please. I, I would look malnourished, um, sunburnt, <laughs> weathered, um, calluses on my feet. Um, my hair... Is a bit wild. Um, I, I don't have a brush, so it is what it is. I, I since I have long hair, but it's very um, wind, 
blown and uh, yeah, just. But the body really feels quite healthy. That I feel healthy. I feel good. I feel awesome. I just don't look that way. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're doing so good. Is there anything else going on there that you notice that you want to mention? I don't sense that I've, I, I don't, I'll have to sit with this a bit, but I'm not, I mostly stay outside of the pyramid. I don't even know if the pyramid can be entered into with the physical body. Um, I, I feel like maybe in time and through certain frequency adjustments, I may be allowed to enter in the, to the pyramid, but it's not something one does. What do you think about that? I'm okay with it. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to obliterate myself if I go in. Okay. Well, that's, that's I, smart. So I, you stay outside? And... Yeah, I'm just very comfortable. It's very beautiful. I, I love the noises. It, to maybe an onlooker, it might seem very barren, but I, I name the rocks and the stones, and um, I know the frequencies well that visit me, and I feel very at peace and and content. Like this is what I do. Yeah. So you communicate with the rocks and the stones. I wouldn't say so much communicate. I'm just I see them as partnering with me okay uh like even those stones were meant to be supporting the pyramid shape so we feed each other I wouldn't say I'm buddies with the stones but I I am aware that they have a consciousness that they they have a purpose nice. and that I have a purpose and that we are utilizing each other's energies to help with bigger purpose Okay, so most days when you're working with the pyramid, is it that walking clockwise or counterclockwise around it? or do you Yeah, do just, it way? depends. Every day I just, you know, I'm just guided. I'm just open, you know, put your, put your hand at this location, please, and then I'll do it. Or lay your back against this location and look up out onto the water or go into the water five steps, scoop out some, place it here. I mean, it's very specific. Um, and I just do it. Nice. And the, the frequencies and the dimensions that are giving the entities that are giving you that mm -hmm. information, do you ever go to them in any way? Or is it always the information coming into you? I feel like I have gone to them, but I don't know if I'm consciously aware that I have gone to them. Okay. I feel that if I do go there, it's I'm in a state where I, I, they don't have me remember going. Okay. Understood. All right. Anything else going on there that day that you notice that you want to mention? I'm concerned about the top of the pyramid. Tell me what's going on at the top of the pyramid. I'm not sure. I sense a disruption. Uh, something's happening where the anchor point, it, the, the light that's coming out of it is changing. And what's causing it to change? I'm not sure. So I'm asking for guidance. Um, I'm asking for guidance and for some reason I'm not hearing any guidance or feeling any guidance. Is that unusual? Yes. And um, so how does it appear or feel different to you now than it did before? The beam coming out the top is different. It's, it's smaller. It's, uh, and I'm trying to discern if it's 
like all of the energy is compacted into almost what looks like a laser or a point, or if it is just getting weaker. Hmm. And I'm questioning myself. I'm wondering if, am I seeing this right? And so what happens next? <laughs> I try to climb up, but I slide off. Oh. <laughs> um, I resign myself. There's a part of me that's like, no matter what happens, I'm not leaving this place unless I'm guided. Like I am to be here no matter what is happening to the light. Like I am, I'm to hold space. I'm to hold the frequency myself. Okay. I'm becoming the pyramid. Oh, what is it like as you become the pyramid? Well, I just, I hear from spirit. You're, you're becoming the pyramid. I don't have to go into it. It's coming into me. Okay. And tell me more about that experience. I don't, I, I, I'm open, but I'm concerned because I'm literally worried about how the pyramid can fit into myself. Okay. <laughs> Cause it's big, it's a big pyramid. And then I just am trusting. I just see myself guided to lie down on my back on the ground. And it's not the pyramid itself, the physical pyramid that moves inside of me. It's the energy that has been created within the pyramid that moves inside of me. And what is that like for you? I'm vibrating. Um, and yet I'm trusting that I've been prepared that I won't obliterate. Okay. Do you think this experience is tied into the fact that the energy was different coming out of the tip or is this a separate? I feel like the energy, what, I, what I'm now knowing is that the energy was it's still flowing, but it was going inside of the pyramid. So the energy was almost being sucked down into the middle of the pyramid. It was a container. The pyramid was a container of this energy. And then that energy then went out of that pyramid and into my body. And so... Now what will happen? I don't know. I'm in an island by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm looking at my hands and it's like I am, I'm looking at my body and I'm, I'm sparkly. I'm, I don't have, I have form, but I don't have form. It's like I'm particles in the shape of who I was, but I'm particles of this energy. And like I always do, I just ask, what am I to do? What do you want me to do? And what do they tell you? Just be who you are and shine. So that's what I do. Do you stay laying down there? No, I, whatever I want to do. I can. A part of me is kind of sad because I, I've gotten kind of used to walking around the pyramid and communicating directly to it. Ah, I'm, I am, uh, I see myself like spirit is now, these entities are now guiding me to put hands on different parts of my body. Oh, like you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what is that like for you when you do that? I just trust it. I, I, I'm still trying to get used to, I'm just these particles. And but, so does the energy from the pyramid feel different now that it's in you? That, I that feel it in a different way. I, I, pyramid? Yeah, I, I feel I, it, I know the energy well because I've been working with the energy. But now I am the energy. And I'm honored. I feel it's a great gift and a great responsibility. And so part of me... 
feels very humbled by it. Mm-hmm. And and what I'm hearing the them say is you don't worry about it. You just do you just do what you do and we'll guide you just like what we did around the pyramid. We'll guide you to what you, you need to do with your body. Nice. And with the energy. And so what is that like as, as time moves on? What is that like mm-hmm. for you? I see myself in different cultures, like I'm traveling places. Um, so I'm no longer on that island. But I'm transported to different places of where they say that energy needs to be. Oh, nice. And so when mm-hmm. you're being transported, mm-hmm. what is that like? I don't have... It's like a part of me is almost um, like a light switch turned off during those times when I'm being transported. Okay. I just know that like I will sense you are being transported, like get ready to be transported. Mm-hmm. And then I go almost into a meditative state. Okay. And then the next thing I know when I open my eyes, I'm at the other place, nice. like uh, wherever I'm to go. And it has to do with the grid, the energy, the, I'm an anchor for this energy and they take me wherever I need to go. And so the place, let's do this. Let's, let's go to where you're needed mm. at this time, drifting and floating mm. to where you're needed. And now you're there, leaving that other part behind. And tell me what this new place is like for you. I'm hearing it's the Holy Land. You're at the Holy Land. And tell me about that. Uh, I, I'm i hearing the name Jerusalem. Um, <laughs> I've seen clay, clay pots. Like I'm, I'm watching. I'm, I'm in a market. And... I just trust. I, I'm just, I hear the frequencies and the dimensions and they just tell me, you know, turn here, go here, walk here. I trust it because I just, my body is the energy. And so I go, I go where they tell me. And do you think the other people around you, do they perceive no, you? No, I mean, they see me. I'm, I have clothes on. Okay. <laughs> they, fit they, I fit in, uh, but I do have rings. I have some jewelry on. The same rings that you had on. Yes, before? some. Di- uh, they look the same to okay. me. So you brought your rings with you. Mm-hmm. Um, you look right. like you're part of that culture. Yes, um, I can because of oh because of the um, the molecules I became or the energy particles. Yeah, the particles. Yeah. I can form into whatever I want. Oh, wow. Can't, so that's your choice of what yeah, you form into? Yeah. I, I basically am like a mirror. I mirror what the society or the people look like. Kind of like what the average person would look like. I manifest in that way. Okay. And so as you're manifested there in the mm-hmm. way that you decide that fits in, you're listening to the direction that you're getting from the higher realms. Mm -hmm. And what do they tell you to be doing? So right now I'm, (laughs) I'm going over, they say to check the lady's clay pots. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm just holding her pottery and telling her how beautiful it is. And as I'm touching it, the frequencies are going into, into, into it. She has no idea. Okay. Um, (laughs) And I am, I am, it's like comet, you know, dinnerware and I'm just guided, you know, touch this plate, touch this drinking glass. And so how do you think that will affect or change the dinnerware and those that use it? It, it, the inner, okay. Like the rocks were around the pyramid that helped me with the energy. Mm -hmm. So is like whatever I touch, it's like a conduit. So like I'll. I'll touch the pottery, let's say. I'll, t- I'll touch that. 
And then it holds that energy until, like, I see somebody drinking out of the cup. And then that energy goes into that person, but in the appropriate amount needed for them. Okay. Like, the energy I carry is too much for, like, it would not be safe for someone to take it all in. So in the perfect amounts needed, it will be released to them. And is that like something that enhances them or? Yeah, they don't have any idea. And what do you think they experience differently because of that happening on their behalf? I just know it's going to be awesome. I don't necessarily. It's not for me. I just am led to where to go. Their reaction, I have to somewhat remove myself from. Okay. You're just I'm doing it. it like undercover. Okay. And does it feel like you stay there in Jerusalem very long? I'm kind of outside of time, even. Uh, like, I'm not sure what you mean by long, but I... Um, I'm guided down these markets. I uh, being told to go to a carpenter. And when you get to the carpenter, what do you do? There, there's a. I, I I'm kind. I I talk to the carpenter. I talk about his his lovely workmanship. Um, but, and I touch, I touch the things there and I'm admiring them, but what I'm really admiring is, is a little boy. Tell me about the little boy. Oh, he's, he's special. Tell me what you can about the little boy and why it makes you emotional. I just know he's really special. And uh, that I'm to hang out there in the carpentry shop as long as I can. Okay. Even if it might annoy the carpenter. <laughs> and I, I get down. I, I'm getting down now. Uh, the carpenter steps away. I, I sense that he's irritated with me, which he is. But it allows me some time with the boy. And tell me about the boy. He's very aware. He he's he sees my energy, but he's also very young. Um he's very connected. Like I'm seeing energy come out through the top of my head and arcing over to the top of his head. Oh, what, tell me about that. What's happening? I, I'm just trusting. I, I see it. He senses it. He's kind of laughing, and he's playing in the dirt. <laughs> uh, he's playing in the dirt. He's smiling. He, he's, he's very loved. And I'm just putting these energies from all of these dimensions and um, it's it's coming out through through my head like it did with the pyramid but instead of going straight up it's just going right down into his head and I'm concerned I'm asking the frequencies to myself is it going to harm this little one is it too much and they just say to trust them so I am so does, what are you doing while this is, is it very, very fast or does it take some time? Uh, it's, again, time. I, uh, it's the perfect amount needed. The perfect, it, it's like when the father was away just for that time. Mm -hmm. Between the time the father left and came back is when it occurred. And do you get any knowledge from the others about what this transfer of energy is going to do for that little boy? Uh, I just know that it's important. 
I sense that he's also an anchor. He's an anchor. He's a big part of the grid. Tell me more about that. I, I'm not really, I don't ask for that information, really. I just trust it. I just, I know, I, I, I know when I was in his presence that he's chosen. But you don't know what his role or his job will be later? Other than, I mean, being an anchor, he's, but... Will he be known? Yes. He, he's, we are in somewhat similar paths in that he also hears spirit clearly, is very led by just, you know, do this or experience this or feel this or touch this person or do this thing and yet his life is also one that might have him alone at different time or maybe not physically alone but that which may be alone in other ways like not understood um, so I sense a kinship with him like he's a brother like a, right. you know uh like, I don't have my own children. Uh, that's a path I chose not to have. But he feels like, like if I would have a child, he would be my child. Do you share any of your knowledge with him besides the energy that transfers? It's all the same. It's all the same. Okay. My energy is the energy that flows through me, which flows through him. Nice. Uh, and... I know my time with him will not be long, but that others will also come to help on his journey. But this was a very important uh, important thing for me to do. And when you're finished there, then what do you do? I watch him. Like, I choose to kind of blend in a little bit to the to the groups, but I often will come to the back to the uh, market where the potter and the carpenter and the foods and the wares are being sold. You and check in on him. I do. Yeah, I check in, and then there's other times where. I'll go visit his dad and he'll get, he doesn't like me much, his dad. <laughs> I, not in a, he just wonders my intentions, I think. Okay. Can you, do you share with him anything? Any of your knowledge? No, I talk shop. Okay. I talk, I talk guy things, you know, like he's thinking, am I wanting to learn from him or what's, what's my intentions? But my intentions are the boy. Okay. And so when I go, like I, I purposely almost try to irritate his dad so he'll leave and then I can funnel more frequency into into him. And as time goes on and you're doing that, um, what does the boy change in any way or do you notice anything about him? Oh, yes. I mean, he's he's growing up and, and lovely, but he is soon uh, taken away uh, to learn elsewhere. Like, uh, yeah, Tell it's a place I can't go. What is that place like? Um, I don't, so there's two different places. I don't, uh, have names for them, but one seems, uh, there's these people that wear kind of interesting garments and kind of seem important, what even are, though I don't think they're as important as they think they are. What are the garments like? Ornate, like, uh, they also have jewelry and there's some, 
ones that can carry quite a bit of frequency, but there's others that are closed off for the frequency. But I'm not allowed to go into that place. My energy's not compatible. Okay. So he leaves to go learn from others? Yeah, and then, then there's another time he he goes uh, to a, it's a hidden place in, in, in the hills, desert, uh, a place of, of learning, of, it's a hidden group. Interesting. So then what do you do once he's gone? I, I just go wherever I'm told to go. Um, different places on the grid, uh, you know, just like what I did on the pyramid, put your hand here, walk this way, turn here, touch this person. I just do it. Well, let's do this. Let's leave that place in Jerusalem that's stripped and float to the next place you go to. And now you're there. And now what do you notice? Mm, I'm seeing, it feels lush. It doesn't feel deserty. It feels, um, uh, wet, more wet, uh, more like a tropical location. And what are you doing now that you're there? Mm, I'm, again, I was placed here and uh, I'm seeing these trees, palm trees, circling me and I'm looking I'm standing in the middle of this opening uh, there's a lot of these palm trees but there's this circular opening a okay. uh, circular clearing clearing okay and I'm standing in the middle of that opening and I'm beaming energy Tell me more about when you're beaming energy, what that's like. I just surrender myself to it. Um, I, I was led to go, I mean, I was placed in a certain spot. Um, ah, I'm seeing it's different this time. I'm seeing the energy not only go up and out of me, but down through the earth and out the other side. Oh, wow. So tell me more about that. Again, it's an anchor point. Like I see myself like I'm able now to anchor my energy like on one part and then it shoots through the middle of the earth and anchors directly across and sends light out from there too. It's like it's coming out through both ends. And do you get a sense of the other side's the pyramid. The black pyramid? Yeah. I'm seeing the other side is where the black pyramid is. Oh interesting. And so now the energy flowing through me while I'm standing on the earth, this moist earth, is it shooting through? And now the energy is coming up through the bottom of the pyramid that is on the ground, through the earth, and then up through the top. Oh, wow. How does that feel for you? Like it's what I'm doing. It's, I'm honored. Does the energy from the pyramid also come back into you, or does it just shoot straight out into the pyramid through the earth? It connects to the grid, Do which you... is all over the the earth, and and but it's it shoots out. It shoots both. I am I see my hands up above my head, like I'm holding them up. I'm holding a stone. I'm holding. Oh, tell something. me about the stone you're holding. It's a pyramid. It's a oh, it's a black pyramid. A little one, like a, 
Is it the same material as? Yeah, like Shanghai or something. And I'm, I'm holding it up, and so the energy is coming up through that, and then now coming out through my feet, through the earth, up through my feet, through the bottom of the big black pyramid, and now out through the top and out that direction. Wow. And how do you think that's changing or affecting the grid? I just know it's good, and then I'm called to do it. Nice. Are there others there with you? No. In your form, what is it like now? I'm of that true form, uh, so I'm not mirroring anyone else. I'm like of particles, but yet uh, I still have a shape. But there's just light and sparkles and things between. When I look down at my hands, it's like it's not solid. And the, the trees, the palms that are mm. encircling you, mm. what is their significance? With the root system, something with a root system. Uh, their root, like they're picking up on the energy, which is then sending through their root system into the earth nice. okay. as well. Anything else going on there that you notice? I'm being observed. I Tell me like. I feel there's other dimensions and frequencies like they're seeing me do this. Like there's a lot of them. Like, like I almost feel like I'm in a coliseum and I'm in the middle oh. and they're watching me, but not, they can't, they can't, uh, they can't touch or they can't, they're observing like this is something big, but they can't. Do you like? Do you think like they're learning from you? I think they've been called to observe that moment, like that exact moment. Yeah. And so, tell me, what is it about that exact moment that's so important? I don't know. I I just am. I just listen, and I'm aware of them, but. I'm aware they're not necessarily the frequencies that I normally talk to. Like I'm kind of seeing another realm looking at me. Do you think this is the first time they've done that or? No, uh, they, they've done it more. Like it's like they're watching me making uh, just like, keep your eye on this one. <laughs> How do you feel about that? I'm okay with it. I know I can't be harmed. I know they can't touch me. Like the frequencies around me, like no one can get too close. Okay. And when you're done with that work there, do you get a sense of what, what you do next? I go back to the boy. Oh, okay. So you've left there, you've gone back to the boy. And now what do you notice? I'm told I can't look at him. Why? I don't know. I just am told not to look at him. But I am to be there. Where he is. And that he needs this energy. Why does he need the energy? I'm not sure. But I also realize it will probably take all of the energy that's flowing through me. And take all of your energy to send to him? Yes. And that I'm willing to do it, but that that's why. That's why I'm here. Yeah, I have to. I I have to take everything that's built up and without looking at him. And so, as you're doing that, what is that like for you? I'm honored. I love this this person.
and I don't understand it, but I know he's, his energy was getting weak at that time and that he had asked for strength. And you are the one that supplied that strength in the form of energy? Well, not me. The frequencies that right. flow through me okay. it's from many places. Right. Right. But so you were there to be with them? I, yeah, it wasn't mine. It, it was through me. Right, right. I'm sorry. I understand that. Okay. So you're doing this. It's going to take all of your energy? Yeah. I, I will not live through it. Okay. And at the very end, as you're giving out the very last part of your energy, tell me what that feels like to you. Absolute joy. I feel like... My light, or the light that was flowing through me, through the pyramid and then I was taking the energy of that pyramid and then I gave it to him I just felt like it was the perfect melting like of course that's what it's for right. <laughs> wow beautiful and no wonder people were watching they are watching yeah oh the, 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 the Coliseum uh, yeah like a, are they also watching this yes too? yes is it similar to when they were watching before? Is it different? That's similar. They've they've watched me for a long time, but this was this was something very. He he was he was scared, which is he's so strong, but he. Do you get a sense at that point in his life what his role was? He was a carrier of love and of this energy. He just was scared. And so he asked for help and that's what was delivered. Wow. All right. You are doing so well. So let's do this. Let's move away from that scene. Whatever has happened has already happened. You've left that experience, that body, that form, drifting and floating back to the other side. And now you're there. And from this perspective, you can look back over that life and know and see everything that was important about it. What were some of the lessons that you learned in that life? To trust. What else? To listen and know that I am a hundred percent fully provided for, and that the importance of the bigger purpose. And the part I play in the bigger purpose. And I just sensed, I'm sensing just a lot of gratitude around me. Uh, appreciate, appreciation. Okay. Thankfulness. And I'm giving that back to those that gave it to me because I feel grateful as well. What do you think was the purpose of that life? To learn surrender and openness and the strength that comes with that and how when one is open and to the energies that it's all good. 
but it has to be only those purest energies, refined energies, not just any energy. I was very careful about discernment of those energies. Oh, that's right. You were very good at that, right? Yeah. I, yeah. That's why I was chosen for that is because I don't allow, I do not allow anything. that would cause harm or ill will or anything in that space or in me or out of me. Beautiful. You just did so good. Anything else about that lifetime that you notice that you want to mention? So I, I keep on looking at my hand in the rings. I, I don't know all the significance with that, but that, uh, there's something with that. Okay, we can find out. That's great. I know you could have brought forth many different lifetimes to show her today. You showed her this amazing life as an anchor of energy, um, helping throughout different places on the planet. Why was it important to show her this life? Because that is what she is now. Tell us more. She has been placed on this earth and at this time to be this anchor. She is one that discerns, has a keen discernment for only the highest frequencies and energies. And she has a unique and rare connection to other realms and dimensions. She's not afraid of them. She has uh, imagination. She's, she's creative and silly too. And joy helps. Joy is very good at bringing forth the frequencies, even making them stronger. <laughs> uh, we like that of her. And uh, she's trusting. She's, she's a very open person. Beautiful. In the, um, that pyramid, mm -hmm. the black pyramid that she was spending mm -hmm. quite a bit of time at, where is that located on the earth? It is in a place that is no longer there now, but would be very, uh, very close to what you would have had Lumeria, more in the southeastern portion of Lumeria, is where that was located, but it was off of that. It was it was an island. Okay, perfect. And the Lumerians wouldn't have wanted that energy on Lumeria. It had to be outside of Lumeria. Okay. Why wouldn't they have wanted it on... It was too much. It was it was uh, too high of a frequency. It uh, bothered their ears. Oh, yes. <laughs> so she was placed on that island then. Yes. Mm hmm. And the little boy that she was overseeing, helping supply energy to. Can you tell us more? That was Jesus. Yes. And can you share more about her connection? her transferring of energy to Jesus and, and just, she was so good to just do what she was told, mm -hmm. but can you give her more information about how that affected or anything else that would be interesting for her to know about? It helped. Um, she was placed there at that time in his life, uh, to activate, uh, codes in his body, in his, frequency in his being, it, his molecular structure, everything. Um, there's so much happened with that energy transfer, uh, but it was all pre, uh, all, uh, planned in ways that would not impact his free will, but would allow him to be able to hold the energies he was asked to hold in that lifetime. Nice. Okay. And when she went back to him, when he would, mm. was having some fear, mm -hmm. what was happening then at that time? 
He felt very misunderstood. Um, he was alone. He, he, he had very close people in his life and ones that he loved, but he was never fully understood. And he felt like he was in between two worlds many times, the earthly world and, and the world of highest energy and source. And he was pulled between those. And there were some days, just like we all have days, that we just need a little extra uh, love and understanding. And he was not afraid to ask for those things. And she, or he, at the time, was not afraid to offer. And so on that, on his last day when he's directing all of his energy mm -hmm. to Jesus, um, what can you tell her? her about that time that that has more importance than what she could ever comprehend that the gratitude that not only Jesus had for her or for him at that time Jesus knew that he was there um, but that to trust that that lifetime that w that what happened there with that energy exchange was exactly what was to happen and that the willingness of him that did that was heavily was greatly rewarded and those that were viewing what was happening she said like it was like a coliseum of of entities or aspects uh, beings that were watching mm -hmm. What do you want her to know about her role with them? She has great assistance from other dimensions and entities and frequencies to this day. Uh, that because of her openness and only for highest good to flow through her, uh, they have imprinted and implanted as well codes within her, not only energy that expands out from her body and uh, aura, but also within her physical body. Um, and that they need somebody with the integrity and the responsibility and the discernment that was displayed back in that lifetime, in this lifetime now. Some a great caretaker of the energy. Okay, we're gonna, can we get into a lot of that detail here in just a little bit? Yes. Okay, thank you so much for all that. So amazing, thank you for sharing that. Oh, she had uh, questions about the rings. Mm. Um, what is she seeking? What do you want her to know about the rings? She is right in that they had great significance, but she's also okay with knowing that that doesn't need to be verbally communicated, that um, those are sacred codes and frequencies that were allowed to be placed on her body to help with the healing and evolution uh, at that time and at this time. And she says she felt like she would be transported from one place to another that needed her. Mm -hmm. um, and that, it seems like it followed a lot of different time spans, if you're mm -hmm. you know, looking at it from an Earth standpoint. Is that right? Uh, yes. And any other major places or significance where she moved to to do this work? She assisted with Machu Picchu. Uh with the uh, the grand exit Tell me. of that people. Oh, oh can of you the share people. with us some information about the grand exit? It was a great people that were highly evolved and, and highly conscious and highly aware, like, like 
she is. Um, and they uh, decided to transport themselves to another dimension altogether uh, at one time as a group consciousness. It was a practice in group consciousness, more than a practice. It was a belief. It was a, a knowing. It was a, it was an understanding of the power of, uh, of groups and of connection, uh, just like the grid, just like the anchor of the grid. And, uh, they needed help with this group, uh, exit and arrival. Mm -hmm. And she helped anchor those energies for smooth transition. And where did they exit to? What was that like? Is a place of higher frequency of uh, another realm, another dimension, a, a very sacred and holy place. And so has that happened in other cultures? Yes. Now? The Aztecs? And... Mm. It has happened in other cultures, some which are not made aware of. Are there others like her that anchor this energy? Or yes. It... Okay. Mm -hmm. Has she ever met one in this current life? Yes. And who would that be that she'd recognize? Christy. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Well... I'll go ahead and move to her list of questions, if that's okay with you. And yes. We'll get back into this again with that. Um, would it be appropriate to ask for a scan of her body? Yes. She's, uh, she asks that you scan her body and energetic fields. She says she's filled with gratitude for all of the releasing, healing, and repair that you are able to grant her today. Uh, we do expect full healing. Tell me where you are working at and what's, uh, what's being done to help completely heal her we're at her heart right now okay. what do you see going on with her heart some calcification some fluttering some emotional attachments that have to do with that but but we're focusing on the heart right now and repairing repairing that uh, there's a valve it's a little off just a little and we're just strengthening uh, the the f way the blood is forced through uh, and oxygenized uh, pumping that through maybe a little bit stronger than what it has been yes what was the root reason behind the calcification and the valve being off a little bit? Some of it is dietary, but some of it, uh, she has eliminated meat from her diet um, as of late, which has helped. Um, some of it has to do with just some emotional um, weakening. And where did that emotional weakening come from? Is it this current life? Yes, yes. Is there anything that she needs to know about that? Just that we love her. And that she is greatly loved. Um, it might not feel that way with human love. But that we think she's pretty awesome. <laughs> she is very awesome. I agree. And so... Explain to us exactly what you're doing to do that healing. It's so interesting. We're just filling it with light. Um, uh, we're seeing, we're filling the heart with uh, a golden light. It's uh, super high frequencies within it. Um, it's smoothing out and at the same time um, liquefying and evaporating any uh, blockage or calcification. And now it is being... Uh, absorbed into the uh, heart interior and exterior and just uh, making it thrive, uh, restoring it to um, its optimal health, which he often asks for, optimal health and optimal, yes. optimal health in every area. And that is what we are doing from cellular 
uh, to her atoms, to her DNA. Uh, it, we're all feeling it's just flowing out from her heart now at this time um, and infusing every aspect of her body. I'm spending a little bit of time on her ovaries right now, um, which also has to do with her lower back and the pain she experiences there. Okay. Um, What's the root reason behind the problems in that area? Uh, about her sexuality, about um, her embracing her sexuality, but also... Uh, uh, not having a child of her own, even though she did not want one in any of her lifetimes, uh, there's still, um, we're picking up on some pain there with that. Okay. So what are you doing to help heal that? Again, just infusing everything with love and light and gratitude. Um, uh, seeing more blood flow come into those areas, into her lower back, uh, heat um, in her lower back. What will she notice differently after the session because of that work? First, it's going to take an awareness for her to be aware of her body. Okay, well, we talked about that. Yes, she doesn't uh, resonate. This is not, she doesn't feel like this is, this is her home. Uh, this body? Yes. Uh, so, um, but when she is in, in it, she should feel more comfortable. Yes. Now, um, we are also focusing on her knees. Uh, her knees are bothering her, uh, crackling, Um and what's the root reason behind the knees crackling? It has to do with the energy she holds. Tell us more about that. Um, there's a great deal of it in that her bones, her her cells, her body needs to be brought up to uh, the necessarily alignment, the necessary alignments to allow her to hold this energy. Uh, we are noticing that the the knees uh, were not upgraded as they needed to to be able to hold this energy. Um, she thinks it has to do with her weight, which you know, uh, that's what the doctors would say, but we we say it's the energy. Okay. So what are you doing to help upgrade the energy to her knees and anywhere else in the body that needs it to help her hold the energy? We're seeing bits of crystalline energy being infused with her physical body, her bone, her tissue, her tendons, her, her blood. Uh, it's, it's actually a different structure. It's a different protein. It's, uh, it's a high frequency and it, it, if you would look at it, it would look like it was sparkling. Nice. What will she notice differently because of that work being done on the knees? She should notice uh, a reduction in the in the crackling. Uh, it will take uh, some adjustment and some more time. This this infusion of these um, crystalline structure uh, will take will take a while. Will take some time, and that's based on we have to be careful how much energy. Uh, we download it at certain times, but it will be done in her sleep and will be done with her permission, of course. Um, and it will happen throughout her entire body. And once everything's where at the levels it needs to be, then what will she notice? 
she'll be more aware of her body. She, she, it will be easier for her to be fully integrated into her body. And she, that's one of the reasons she hasn't been fully integrated in her body is that she wasn't able to be fully integrated into her body without it causing destruction and harm. Because her energy is so high? Yes, the, the energy that flows through her, yes. Okay. Not her energy, the energy that flows through her. Um, it It is a, such a, a frequency that it, it would have, if she would have been fully in the body, either she wouldn't have been aware of the other energy, or if she is fully aware of the energy, it wouldn't have been able to be put into that vessel. And so what you're saying now, by doing it, in the appropriate amounts. Yeah. The, the crystals, the, these, these, this, these particles that we're, we're adding to Heidi, they're going to be able to hold just like crystals hold more energy. Right. And contain that energy. Imagine them all throughout the body. So, you know, they're able to hold immense amounts of energy. Um, and yet, not cause harm to the physical self. Nice. Beautiful. So it will also allow her to, to, uh, channel more energy through her than what she has been used to. Oh my goodness. And how will she use that extra energy? We will guide her. She listens very well to what we need her to do. Kind of like life that you yes. show her. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's. She does say that she listens pretty good. <laughs> she does. See, we we like that about her. <laughs> she's pulling on some old uh, skills. Isn't yes. She? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So heart, ovaries, lower back, knees, anywhere else that you're noticing. Her DNA. Okay, and what do you see going on with her DNA? The evolution, the further evolution of that. Mm -hmm. Um, This is something she has been working on and that we have been assisting her with, but it's now now time for it to increase more, yes. So tell us exactly how that's happening and what she'll notice from it. It's happening upon the agreement between her and spirit. Um, it's it's the perfect time now that the 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 crystals are now um, being put into her body as well, and we're looking at twenty eight strands. Twenty eight strands. Wow. So from where she walked into this appointment today to when the 28 strands are fully running, what will she notice differently? Well, she came in with 12. Okay. And uh, she, she will be humble about what she notices. Uh Again, it's going to be her being aware of her physical body, like seeing herself. And she'll see herself differently. She'll she'll see uh, she'll see and feel sparkling or frequency or vibration. Um, as as she helps others and and her business and her Reiki and her healing and her artwork, uh, more frequencies. I mean, just, she's very open to, um, she would call it the woo woo. She's open to the woo woo. Uh, well, she will notice more woo woo happening. Um, and, and where in her body, when those energies come through, she might notice different sensations, uh, different feelings, different vibrations than what she's accustomed. And uh, as long as she does what she does with ask for highest good and that for divine protection and love and light, she will not be harmed by these. Nice. Okay. Beautiful. Anywhere else in the body that you're looking at?
the, the left leg. We're, we're now just sending extra energy through her left leg. What do you see going on with her left leg? Some numbness from uh, her back, her lower back. Uh, there has been some spine um, compression. Okay. And uh, a, a bit of a nerve that has been uh, been pinched. And so we're, we're s going in with the vertebrae and kind of elongating that a little bit. And, and it's allowing more blood and flow and energy to flow through her left leg at this time. Oh, I guess she'll really appreciate that. Is she feeling the energy now? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Well, she wonders what lifestyle and or dietary changes would most benefit her to thrive in her body, mind, and spirit. Again, she listens very well to us, and uh, she's she's been one to ask repeatedly, 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 repeatedly <laughs> for the highest energies possible to move through her, and uh, and we let her know lately that. Um, it would be a benefit for her to cut out meat from her diet um, to help more frequencies move through, and she has done this. And this is good. This is helping. This is helping the energies. And she has noticed an energy increase and changes. Um, drinking more water is always great. How much water is great for her body each day? Sixteen more ounces than what she's normally doing. She drinks a lot of water, but 16, at least one more of her big bottles than, than what she normally does okay. would help. Yes. Okay. And we will help her bladder with this as well. Okay. <laughs> That's really nice. Um, anything else? Anything else she should avoid? Just be more mindful of the processed foods. You know, just um, anything more um, pure, you know, fruits, vegetables. Um, eggs are fine with her at this time. Um, but the, the less processing, the better. Um, anything she would do to, to elim eliminate or reduce this would help. Perfect. And she wonders, what is she currently doing that is the most benefit for her in all of these areas? Her meditation. Oh, explain that to her. It is of enormous benefit of her, um, for her. Um, when she meditates, she does this often, um, quite often, actually, um, she wouldn't call it meditation, but it, it is indeed that, um, uh, what, what is happening when she connects, when she gets in this state, um, it just aligns everything. It just not just of the physical. Um, it just helps in every in every area. So what she is doing now is very good to, to continue um, and to just continue to follow our leading if and when we need her to meditate. Is she doing that meditation work when she's doing her paintings? Uh, a form, yes. Uh, she... She's very in touch with us. We just love that about about Heidi. Um, she's intentional. She's very loving. Um, she's very respectful and honorable of the energies that flow through her. And she creates a, a sacred space uh, in wherever she is, um, especially where she paints. Um, and she's been deliberate about this. Um, but... 
she has asked and she has set the intention from when she set the intention until for forever, that whatever she touches, whatever she breathes upon, whatever she sees will be infused with the highest frequencies and vibrations possible that are for the highest good for those who are the recipients of that. And so with her paintings, she's infusing the paints and the waters and, and with sound and with, and even the sound is, um, we've guided her with different frequencies. She had no idea what the sylphagio frequencies were. Mm -hmm. uh, we liked that surprise, um, telling her about that. Um, and, you know, with the frequencies and with the energies that are flowing through, um, even the, the stones and the crystals that she's guided to put at certain locations, uh, all of it, she's just listening to everything we're telling her. She's just not trusting that it's good enough. Well, I think after experiencing that lifetime as that energy anger, she'll be able to trust it a little bit easier this time, don't you think? That's a challenge for, for this one. <laughs> <laughs> she's very self-critical. Oh, so can you, can you yeah. help with that a little bit? Because she, sure. she does sure. Yes. has such a great heart and wants to help so much. And we don't want her backtracking herself because of that. We're just surrounding her with our love that she may feel that and our appreciation and just our trust that if we were able to provide for up to this point that we will continue to do so and, and to connect those paintings and those frequencies and the intentions behind them to the right people to help her. She thinks she has to do it all by herself. Uh, like at the pyramid, you know, when she was walking around, right. she was all alone. She's, many lifetimes she's been alone. And so with this, she feels like, how am I going to do this all by myself? And w we're going to be bringing those people to her. She just needs to trust the timing and trust herself as a conduit, as a an instrument of us to just breathe through it and do the best she can, and we'll work with that. Nice. Okay, well, I've got more questions about the painting and the codes, but let me move on with the rest of her health questions first, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. She says that she asks that you please... Um, oh, wait, I think we're working on that one. She realized that she's very disconnected from her physical body. We talked about that. Um, she appreciates any perspective, wisdom, and healing that you can offer her today about that disconnection. We feel our appreciation um, of us. Uh, she has been disconnected largely in in this lifetime to, for two reasons. One is her sexuality and her her feeling of judgment of that from those that have been in her life. Uh, the the other is. Uh, the ability of not being able to hold all the frequencies she's needed. Uh, she's, she's been in almost like two locations, almost like what it was in, in the earth while she was on one side and then connected across to the other. It's almost like she's been in two different places. Um, we will help her with this integration um, and we'll help her with the love of self. Perfect. Thank you so much. She is curious about what is her ideal body weight and what are the most effective and efficient ways to achieve it for the long term. The meditation will greatly benefit her um, to maintaining. It's from her, it's not so much about the diet. She feels it is. She puts a great amount of um, guilt upon her for choices she's made um, with her activity or what she eats, but we don't, she brings in such high frequency to whatever she eats. It doesn't matter what she puts in her body. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we just need to let her know you just put your hands on that pizza 
And it's going to hold whatever frequency you need. And the fluctuations with your body, with your body have been because of the energy that you have been told to anchor and that this is going to fluctuate in your lifetime. There's going to be times that you might not be the size you are now. You might be bigger. You might be smaller. And to just trust it and to meditate upon just highest health for you in all areas. Beautiful. Wonderful. All righty. Um, well, let's, let's go with her relationship questions here. Um, will you please share with her some wisdom and guidance regarding the relationship between herself and her mother? The relationship with her mother, the feelings of disapproval and, and shame and having to be a certain way were put in her life, and especially by her mother, to allow her to uh, grow almost a callus. So by her getting used to having this coming to grips with feelings of disapproval and not fitting in and not being good enough will greatly help her with bringing these energies out into the world because she's not going to be accepted by everyone. She's not going to be um, approved of. She's not for many people, they would not be able to deal with the disapproval or the judgment, but we're, we've acclimated her starting with her mother and other things in her life so that she wouldn't, she would just be the light that she is and not so much care about what other people are thinking to live her truth. Not that she will not have fear, but that she will have a love that's greater than the fear that flows through her. Why did she pick the parents that she did for the current life? What was she to learn? Mm -hmm. Well, the mother, we, we just explained. Right. But also, um, her mother also helps teach her with what, what lies beneath the surface. She's been a great mystery to, to Heidi, like what's really there, what's going on. So it's been somebody in her life that has allowed us to show her there's more to people than what they project outwardly. And this has been a great lesson for Heidi in her life. And then in regards to her father, he is one of great joy and silliness, but also of great uh, connection with us as well. And he has great knowledge of uh, the universes beyond ours. So um, that, that's, those are the main reasons. Okay. And what wisdom and guidance do you have for her regarding her current relationships? To go with the ebb and flow that trying to control what we draw to us and from us and bring to us is just like trying to control the waves. But instead to learn how to just be and know and trust that in perfect timing, those perfect people and relationships like they have been up until this point and which will they will continue to do and be 
will be drawn to her and her to them. And that any ebb and flow that happens, any relationships that may be drawn away from her, to trust that and not to feel guilt about it, but just to release it. Just like the waves and to appreciate it and be filled with gratitude, but also allow the inflow as well. That is our advice to her. Thank you for that. And what individuals, groups, communities, or organizations would be of most benefit to her? It is important to note that she will know she will not necessarily feel fully integrated into any group. But that and this is for reasons that have to do with frequency and have to do with the ebb and flow. But that to just set the intention that those groups, people, experiences will be drawn to her and her to them. Thank you for that. What is her purpose of this lifetime? To be the anchor. To be an anchor. Um... She's been receiving codes and languages um, that it is just her purpose to go and to follow our leading, to touch which, which we say to touch, to go to where we say to go, to do what we say to do. And to just be an instrument to just relay those codes. She doesn't have to understand the code. She doesn't have to know what they are, but just that they serve as keys to the awakening of, of the great, the awakening of the further awakening of what is and what is to come. She holds a lot of keys and codes to that um, from other dimensions and multi-dimensions. Um, to here to help humanity at this time and uh, just to trust it, to feel, feel whatever she does with joy and as best as she can. And, but to also remind her too, that just as Jesus needed extra energy at times, that it's okay for her to ask for help and that it will be provided for her in a loving way, just like she provided it. Those are, there are people out there that will provide it to her. And she mentioned back in February of this year when she was painting and wasn't, um, well, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same the very first time, but she was painting, wasn't happy with one of the paintings, and she was guided to write a, a language or codes mm -hmm. of, over the painting. Mm -hmm. um, what was happening at that moment that it was time for that to begin for her? Oh, it was unlocking so many things. It was unlocking messages that we are wanting to get through now, but also unlocking who she truly is with these codes. But that's why she cried afterwards. It's like this whole part of her was ready to, to come out. Um, And so she has some questions about that group of eight paintings, mm -hmm. the grid, the codes. There's nine paintings. Oh, nine. She's, okay. she's wrong. There's nine. Oh, there's a, she's not aware mm -hmm. of that? She might be. She's just not the best at math. Okay. <laughs> well, I feel a sisterhood <laughs> with her there on that. Okay, nine uh, paintings. Yeah. Um, she said that she felt compelled that there's mm -hmm. a grid that goes yeah. in a circle around or uh, in, the, in that mm -hmm. uh, circle of paintings. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so give her all the information that you can today to help her to fulfill what it is that they are here to help with. Yeah. So a great deal of energies and frequencies flow through her hands. She's been doing this through her energetic healing through Reiki, but she's also doing it through her, her art and her paintings. And anything she touches, the paints, the, the crystals, the, the, the sounds, the frequencies, the writing are forming this, these portals. She's, she also has portals that she's been guided to create in these, in these paintings that will allow only those frequencies that are highest good to come through and to move back and forth through. Um, and each painting has a different portal from different dimensions. So when they are all in a circle together, they are communicating. It's like a multidimensional, um, there's multidimensional conversation going on as well as filled with the highest frequencies, right? So you have all of these dimensions talking to this dimension surrounded by highest anchoring energy. So it's like this vortex of energy and of healing that's going to not only come from this dimension, go from this dimension to other dimensions and portals, but then from those portals to this dimension. And she's, she's the guardian, like she was the guardian of, of the pyramid. She's the, she not only is creating these, these, this, this artwork, mm -hmm. but she's also the guardian of it. Like we've guided her on certain things to do and not do and how to place them. And we'll continue with the guiding of this. Um, but, uh, she will be the caretaker of that. Um, and let her know that the grid on the floor, this, the, the sacred geometry on the floor doesn't have to be a literal, you don't have to see it. It can be done energetically. This will give her great peace of mind. Oh, good. <laughs> she thought she might have to do some yeah, tiling. Yeah, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. Great peace of mind. Um, okay. Wow. And she's, she struggles with putting herself so out there in regards to her artwork. Right. Um, she doesn't feel it's worthy, uh, worthy of, of this responsibility. What do you want her to know about that? That it is worthy, that it is not her we are using her, but we are communicating through the colors, through the paints, through the energy, through the portals, through the energy that she is bringing in to and through other dimensions. It, it's on such a grand scale. She, we don't want her to comprehend all of it because she would never paint again. Uh, it would scare her. We don't want her to be scared. We just want her to trust and to just trust that all of those individuals and people that are to help with this will will it will will line everything up for her so she had that question if she could do this full time or how does she edge out of her her job that's giving her the, mm -hmm. the financial stability that she wants yeah where where she's at has been so wonderful for her it really has uh, in so many ways um but we're asking her for more and it's a matter of trust too. She trusts us a lot, but it's a matter of trusting us providing for her in abundance, all that she needs in abundance that, you know, she, she will have more provided for her multidimensionally not just this dimension, just like the rings were provided. Yes. It, we'll, we'll provide things like that for her. She just is scared and that's, we understand that. All right. All right. 
and are there any enhancements or improvements um, that she can do for their ultimate and greatest uses? Clarify that for us. What do you mean? Say that again. So we, we kind of have already answered the first part of this question. Let me read the whole thing together. Um, please share your wisdom and guidance about the purpose of the artwork, frequencies, and languages that she's channeling. What enhancements or improvements can she do for their ultimate and greatest uses? Uh, she'll be guided to take these to different places just like she was transported to different places. Oh, wow. she'll, she'll be guided to take them to different places to anchor the energy in that space. And when do you think that might start occurring? We're already lining things up. <laughs> okay. Um, wow. She says that she's aware of your guidance to create a new healing space and has been working alongside with you in its manifestation. What is its ultimate purpose? That which has been said. More than what can be accurately conveyed. Um, but that it's an anchoring energy but we need to let her know that wherever she is, is the anchoring energy. So she could create whatever space she wants, wherever she wants, the anchoring spot will be there. So when she says that she'd be grateful for any important details and specifics about the space, you're telling her it's, it could be anywhere. It can be anywhere. She won't like hearing that. Um, it can be anywhere. Um, her healing space is her. And so that's why travel will be involved. But she doesn't like that. She doesn't like crowds. She doesn't like um, not knowing. She likes knowing. <laughs> yeah, she does. She, <laughs> she definitely she, like that. she likes a plan. <laughs> and uh, that's part of her journey in, in this next phase is just to trust us and the guidance and that everything logistically, monetarily, physically, multidimensionally, everything will be, will be provided. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> she asks, are there unknown abilities that she possesses that you would be willing to unlock or reawaken in her today? Yes. Um, the uh, ability to transport. Um, she's had some experience with this, with being at multiple places at different times. Um, there will be times that she will be guided, uh, often in the dream state, to take the energy she holds and go transport herself. Um, she's been somewhat aware of this, but this is uh, more ability with this. She has more than, uh, that can be unlocked within her, uh, that we will unlock for her today, uh, that will allow her to do so more in a conscious state, um, rather than just as she sleeps. Okay. She's going to be a busy girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, um... Any other information about uh, having guidance for transitioning away from her full-time job? It's just continue to listen to us, that we love her, and that all will be provided in abundance at the perfect times, that it will be made to her know when that time is right. It seems as though that life that you showed her of the, the man that was doing yes. this work didn't seem to have too much worry about his no. being taken care of, did he? No. And he was taken care of perfectly yes. well. She doesn't like to be naked, though. He did. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you can probably let her keep her yes. clothes, right? Yes, so yes. want her to feel comfortable. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, go him, you know. Uh, Bless his heart. Okay. Yeah. So um, 
she asks, please help her to understand her strong emotions towards some religious and spiritual institutions. Mm -hmm. This is her discernment of the energies of only the purest and highest energies. And in these organizations that she has in her mind, some which have been of uh, more conventional uh, religious all the way to uh, more of what would be viewed as spiritual. She thought she might feel more comfortable on the spiritual side and not have resistance, but she is having resistance and that confuses her. And it's the discernment of the frequencies. She's very in tune with the frequencies and there's individuals within every organization that their frequencies might not be aligned. And she's picking up on that. Um, we're, we're working with that every, you know, perfection is also something that Heidi deals with. Uh, either one, uh, any of these, any organization is going to have imperfection. It's just because imperfect people uh, are a part of it. We're all learning. Uh, but like what we said earlier, um, she will be able to be involved in organizations, but probably not fully integrated because of this. Okay, she, okay it's, her. it's the inner, yeah, it, well, for her. Yeah, yes, this is what is, needs to be done because she has to keep the highest frequency possible. And this means maybe, uh, not fitting within the box. All right. So she doesn't have to try to fit within those organizations or just follow her gut, follow her gut follow her intuition. She, she gets people upset. She doesn't know it. Um, organizations get frustrated with her because when she is in them, she, she, she calls them out and it kind of rubs people the wrong way. Um, we're helping her with her filter on that. Um, but yet honor her speaking her truth and she always speaks it in love. Okay. She's so joyous. So I would, I think even if she was giving you a near You haven't seen in, her mad. Oh, okay. Well, that's, yeah. that's Frustrated. True. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Especially when it comes to, to spirit, when it comes to communicating with us right. and the ability to, she's very, very uh, passionate about nothing can separate anyone from the love of us. And so if anyone comes in and says that you have to do this, this, or this, or be a certain way or act a certain way, uh, she, she stands up for us. Nice. She, she claims, she's like, I'll be the love then. If you can't, I will be. <laughs> Darn it. And she just claims it and then they feel it. And that's one way she can bring up the frequency. But a lot of people are brought into those uh, structures right? They're brought into those organizations and they might find their way to Heidi through that organization, but then realize, oh, well, she's in it, but not really. And that's okay. We kind of tricked them. <laughs> we kind of got them in that way and then want them to experience through her openness, our love and openness. Perfect. Thank you. She wonders if she's being actively tracked, and if so, for what purpose? She says sometimes it feels good and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, she is. She's she's tracked all. There's a coliseum of people watching her. Uh, she cannot be harmed. Let her know this. She she's protected, um, multi-dimensionally, but she's also tracked multi-dimensionally. And for what purpose? She has been through her entire existence. It's the anchor. It's a lot of different dimensions and entities have codes, have um, information. They want to uh, flow through Heidi. Um, and that's why they track her for that. Um, 
and she is being tracked. She is on the radar of, uh, on the awareness of things here more in the physical. Okay. She, uh, she felt that. Yes, um, that is correct. She's very in tune. Um, that is correct. Um, let her know that uh, she is on the radar. They are very aware of her. She is being tracked. Um, they are going to try to mess with the paintings and mess with, uh, with her and just let her know that they can't stand up to us. So how will they try to mess with the paintings or mess with her? Um, different ways. One, what she is aware of, um, is they will try to separate the paintings from one another. Uh, meaning somebody will approach her with uh, temptations of great wealth if if she can if they can have one of the paintings uh, you know all her comforts taken care of and she doesn't necessarily like all the paintings so for her to go oh sure you know here take this and I'll be taking care of the rest of my life is very tempting but we have advised her not to do that. She is the caretaker. The energies that they each one individually hold are just sacred. They all have to stay together. So is she meant to keep those nine paintings together then? And yes. Is it okay for others to see them? Yes. Oh, yes. That's that's their purpose. People are to come to them. And this place, this healing space that she feels compelled to create, is that for that group of paintings as well? Y yes. Um we have shared this with Heidi and we'll continue to share it. These paintings that we are co-creating through her and with her are going to be put on places all around the earth and multidimensionally, multidimensionally, not just dimensionally, multidimensionally. It's happening in multidimension. She's not aware of this as of today. Oh, tell us more about that. Please. So these paintings are also being together on other dimensions. Like there's, it's not just here on earth. It's other dimensions are seeing them as well. And um, here on the earth, we've, we've let her know that we are going to guide her, that she will be led to put these in places that might not seem normal, like, in a, in some place that's pretty nondescript, let's say from the average person, but we know that that energy is on a ley line oh. and connected. And that when she puts those paintings at that location, not only are they activating multi-dimensions and portals and frequencies, but they're also activating the ley lines. So let me ask, since she lives locally here, what is it about her location physically where she lives in conjunction with all of this? This space where she's at, this, this area she's in is of high frequency. It's, it's shifting, it's of much work is being done, much progress is being done from this area and so it allows her a space to evolve and make connections because people are also being brought here that then will continue to take away from here well it's nice to be a neighbor with this one she's here to do some pretty important work isn't she she feels that about you good to have friends, right? Yes. Excellent. So she would like to know what most delights you about her. Oh, her openness. She's funny. She is funny. She's, she's funny. People don't get her jokes all the time, but we do. We <laughs> actually laugh a lot. Um, <laughs> she has quite a, 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 a fan club up here in the other realms um 
just of her silliness, but yet, uh, love, uh, it just, she has a great humor. Um, she's a great teacher. Oh, she cares about her students. She cares about everyone she comes in contact with. And she just, because she's so connected to us, she allows us to flow through her in our words and in our frequencies. And it's just lovely. Um, Yeah. You talk about yourself as us. Um, can you describe mm. and explain who who you are? We, we are the collective. We're <sighs> we are many energy energies and, and and entities and frequencies and dimensions uh, all together um, that use. Uh, I don't want to say use that. In conjunction with Heidi, um, are bringing our messages and our energies to where they need to go. Beautiful. And you said every lifetime she's had this role as yes, an anchor. yeah. Mm -hmm. Has she had many lifetimes on Earth? Yes. Yes. In lifetimes in other places. Yes, she's. She's been around. <laughs> <laughs> She's well known within the multiverses. Oh, I love that. Yes, yes. I love that. Yeah, she's well known and well respected and loved. Yes, very much so. It took a lot for her to be. It took a lot. We were all very surprised when she decided to. Um, to be in this lifetime. So I was going to ask about that. Um, that was her decision to come into this life at this time? Yes. Ultimately, it was. Uh, we respect free will, so obviously it was her, her intention. Um, but she just, she knew, she felt it. She, she because she's so discerning, uh, she knew she, she, this was, was the time. She asks, are there any questions that you wish that she would have asked today? We want her to know she cannot get it wrong. We want her to know that there's perfection and imperfection. We want her to know that we know she's done the best she's, she can, and we are very, very pleased. We want her to know to not be afraid. That is all. Beautiful. Thank you. Let's look back on the body. Um, how is all the healing throughout the body, the heart, the ovaries, the lower back, the knees, the DNA, the left leg? Mm. Left leg is still the heart, good. Ovaries still working, but good. Her her bottom is really tense right now, so we're not sure what that's about, so let us look here. Okay. We're just sending, had to do with groundedness, we're just sending her extra grounding right now. Her left leg will continue to just tingle a little bit, but the healing is moving through. She's feeling it in her foot as well. Crystalline structure, all of that the, that's being done, that's that's continue that will continue, but it, a lot's being done with that. So more energies are able to to go within and through. Yes, it's good. 
And you're saying she'll feel a little bit more grounded into her body, but will have increased energies? Yes. And she'll be able to hear you just as clearly, even more clearly. Yeah, more is. clearly. Yeah. And just like she did in that lifetime, she can just yeah. let you guide her mm -hmm. to what's highest and best. She hears us. It's just then the practical stuff that gets in the way. Yeah. <laughs> and you're helping her with that? Yes. Yes, we will help her. <laughs> okay. Um, very good. How, how will her body feel after this session? A little uh, shaky. Um, yeah, a little shaky, a little, um, might have a headache for a while. What causes um, that? It's energy. Okay. And we don't want her to have any discomfort. No. We help work with that. Yes. Calm that down for her. We yes. Her to... We, we, we took care of that. Oh, nice. You're yeah. very efficient. Yes. <laughs> um, Or focusing again more on her lower back. Mm, root, root chakra too, working, groundedness, providing. So she's allowed this weekend to be open so just continued healing will happen throughout the weekend or just plenty of water and rest we'll, we'll have good sleep for her okay that's yeah. wonderful she'll look forward to that yes so um when she okay so let's talk about when she decided to have this appointment because there's a yeah. story to that mm. um she, she you guided her to where i was going to be at mm -hmm. yes well she she knew of paul uh, she's been reading, uh, we've been communicating with her through Paul for quite some time. Okay. Um, and we, we told her you would be, uh, there. She didn't know of it until the car drive in and she heard that we wanted her to connect with you. And she thought, well, she's not good. What? She, she questioned us and then she heard you introduce her yourself and then she kind of freaked out a little bit. <laughs> Um, but then you sat next to her, her and Tammy um, the rest of the weekend. And um, we kept on telling her that she needed to wait for her session with you, that you were to be the one that she went to, and um, that the others are very qualified and good, but it was to be you that that she met with today. Part of that was because of the frequencies. Uh, her artwork was still being, is still being done, but was really opening up at that time. Um, but the other one is also the connection with you and those you know and who you are and in your own evolution as well. Well, wonderful. We love it when, when things get helped along behind the scenes, so to speak. Yes, indeed. So what was it that you hope she received from today? Mm-hmm. Comfort. Um, she received so much from us, but she, we, we knew on other levels that it's okay to embrace the unknown and to step out as someone different. We've taught her this in her entire life. And that there's a beauty and a sacredness and a stepping out and claiming who you truly are. And if anything, today may not only she realize how much she is claiming who she truly is, but we claim on this day who she truly is. And we anchor it. Multi dimensions, multi frequencies. For now and forevermore, it is so. Wow. Thank you so much for doing that for her. That's beautiful. She's feeling the anchoring in her body. 
It'll be just a moment. Okay. Would you like to remain quiet while that happens? Yes, please. You just let me know when you're ready. Okay. Thank you. Wow. Okay. So how often would you recommend that she listens to this recording to receive the most benefit? What we recommend and what's realistic are, <laughs> are two separate things. Um, Give us both. <laughs> yes. Uh, realistically, whatever she's guided to do, we will guide her of those times. Um, to listen, um, especially now as she might be questioning it more, the more, the better, um, it, it will be good to bring out when she comes at those points in her life, for instance, like if she's felt, if she's hearing that she needs to go someplace, she doesn't want to go. This will benefit her to listen, uh, to reassure her. Um, so at pivotal moments, it will be very helpful to her. Um, she will hesitate sharing it with her closest friends and loved ones just because she will, she's one very sensitive of ego. She doesn't want it to be of her. She doesn't want to be, um, she kind of wants to be in the background a little bit, but just who she is, it's not allowed. She just can't be a background person, uh, even though she tries. Um, so we would encourage her to play these, uh, play, the, play this with uh, Tammy, with uh, some dear friends so that they can talk more and that they can hold space. And it's part of their journey to, to help her. Uh, she helps them, but to also help her. Okay. Kind of opens them up as Yes. Well. It, it helps them help her with her purpose. Perfect. Well, it's good to have friends like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm. She's very blessed. We've, we've put some pretty good people in our life. Awesome. Very good. Anything else that you can think of that would be good for her to share? I'm oh, sharing it with Colleen. Right? We need to. Colleen, Colleen yes. Okay. Um, that we love her. And that... Um, last summer, she was ready to go. Not, not of that of suicide, but that of my purpose is done. I'm ready to go. And if anything, we want her to know that we know you're ready to go, but you so much are needed here for right now. And that when it is time to transition, it will be so easy and so perfect for you. But there's some more work that needs to be done. And it will be joyous and awesome. Just trust us and, and trust others too that we bring to you. Perfect. So from your perspective, what this great work that she and others are doing mm. in many different ways at this time on the planet. What are we preparing for what's happening because of all of this great work? It's to help with the shifting, um, multidimensional shifting, not only to the different dimensions of this earth to the new earth, but the dimension switching dimensions. There's other shifts going on rather than just the earth shifting to another dimension and the people of the earth shifting. It's entities and frequencies and dimensions shifting to other more profound dimensions until everything is brought back to source of who we truly are. that we are all one and all love. Well, and I think her openness, willingness and knowingness to hear you and, and be guided by you shows what a 
beautiful soul she is. We are very grateful for her, yes. Very good. Okay, thank you so much for all of that. 